Welcome to Mr. Adamy's uh, podcast for photosynthesis. All you need to know about photosynthesis is the following slide. No, I'm just kidding. But photosynthesis comprised of a chemical set, set of chemical reactions involving six carbon dioxides and six waters which yield into one glucose molecule and six oxygen molecules. Photosynthesis like cellular respiration is made up of a series of redox reactions in a double membrane organelle. However, the source of electrons for photosynthesis are not the same as cellular, restora cellular respiration. As you can see, the top reaction is the overall reaction for photosynthesis and if you run it backwards, it is the overall reaction for cellular respiration. Photosynthesis requires six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules as the reactants and yields one glucose molecule as well as six oxygen molecules. Notice that this reaction, like I said before, is the reverse of cellular respiration. In the reaction for photosynthesis, you can see that the six carbon dioxide molecules end up with the electrons from six water molecules to become one molecule of glucose. These six water molecules are split into six oxygen molecules by light energy. This splitting of water using light energy as the source is called photolysis. But before we can discuss the process or biochemistry of photosynthesis, we must take into account the structure of the specialized organelle where photosynthesis takes place, the chloroplast. Let's move down the hierarchy of a typical plant. A plant is an example of an organism with its above ground structures or the shoot system is the organ system in which photosynthesis takes place. A leaf is an organ of the shoot system. The surface of the leaf contains small pores or holes called stomata or stoma for the single opening. It is these stomata that allow for the movement of gases into and out of the leaf. One of these gases is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is one of the two reactants needed for photosynthesis. A leaf is made up of different tissues, one of which is the mesophyll tissue. The cells that make up the mesophyll tissue are also called mesophyll cells. And it is these mesophyll cells that contain specialized organelles where photosynthesis takes place. These organelles are called chloroplasts. The Greek word chloro meaning green and the Greek word plast meaning to change form. Let's get a closer look at a typical chloroplast. Like mitochondria, chloroplasts are made up of a double membrane system but with an extra outer membrane that doesn't have an effect on the inner workings, so to speak, of photosynthesis. Thylakoids are membrane bound compartments inside the chloroplast that are stacked into a structure called a granum or grana for plural. The thylakoid membranes are the location of photosynthetic pigments, electron transport chain, ATP synthase, and other enzymes important for photosynthesis. The fluid-filled space around the thylakoids is called the stroma. This is the location of the light-independent reactions, which is also known as the Calvin cycle, which is where sugar, sugar is produced. The stroma is also the location of chloroplast DNA, RNA, and ribosomes. Thylakoid membranes are made up of a phospholipid bilayer. Embedded in these membranes are photosynthetic pigments. These pigments, like phospholipids, are amphipathic, meaning that they have a hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tails. It is these pigments that convert light energy into usable chemical energy. If you notice, the hydrophilic head of chlorophyll A and B has a magnesium ion in the middle. These two heads are called the porphyrin ring. This is the location where light energy is converted into usable chemical energy. The location of the conversion of light energy into chemical energy, as mentioned before, in the thylakoid membranes are in the sections of pigments called photosystems. There are two types of photosystems, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. These photosystems are comprised of a reaction center which is surrounded by accessory pigments. The primary pigment of the reaction center is either chlorophyll A or chlorophyll B. The reaction center is where the photosynthesis begins and the accessory pigments trap extra light energy for the reaction center. As you notice, the photosystem 2 listed above is also denoted as P680 and photosystem 1 is denoted as P700. 
These are numbers referred to the wavelength of visible light that excites these photosystems. Now that we've discussed that pigments, namely chlorophyll, is where light energy is converted into chemical energy, let's see how this occurs. When light energy or photons strike a chlorophyll molecule or the reaction center, the electrons of chlorophyll are excited into a higher state. This process is called photo excitation. It is this energy that is trapped and used by proteins in the thylakoid membrane to power photosynthesis. As the electrons are turned to the lower energy state, or the ground state, they give off energy. This is called fluorescence. If you look at figure B, you can see what chlorophyll looks like when undergoing fluorescent while exposed to UV light. Chlorophyll fluoresces red under this UV light. To see how photosynthetic pigments trap light energy, one must understand what light is. Light travels in waves of, of electromagnetic energy. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. Visible light is the most abundant form of, le of electromagnetic energy available to plants without harming plant tissue. Visible light is broken up into different colors, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, or vibgior, as opposed to the Roy G. Biv we have learned before. Now knowing that visible light is separated into different colors, we can see how this energy is trapped by plant pigments. In all three graphs, the x-axis represents the wavelengths of visible light. The top graph, called an absorption spectrum, shows the different wavelengths or colors of light in which plant pigments, chlorophylls A and B, and carotenoids absorb. Why are the lower wavelengths of light the most absorbed by plant pigments? Because the lower the wavelength of light, the higher the energy available. As you may notice, the colors of light that are absorbed the least are the greens. This is why leaves of plants appear to be green. Chlorophyll A and B absorb all colors of visible light but green. So therefore, they reflect green light, which is what is perceived by our eyes. Why do you think that plants have more than one type of photosynthetic pigment? That's correct, because these pigments can trap more than light energy, more light energy than just what chlorophyll pigments can. The middle graph shows the rate of photosynthesis at, a diff at different wavelengths of light. Notice that the rate of photosynthesis corresponds to the absorption of light by various pigments. This is due to the activity of these pigments. The rate of photosynthesis photosynthesis under different wavelengths or colors of light was tested by Thomas, Thomas Engelman in 1833. He used filaments of spirogyra algae that were exposed to different colors of visible light. He added aerobic bacteria to the suspension and as you can see these bacteria began to grow on the algae where oxygen was being produced by photosynthesis. What colors produced the highest concentrations of aerobic bacteria in the Engelman experiment? That's correct. As you can see, the bacteria grew where the most oxygen was given off. The most oxygen that was given off was in the violet, indigo, and blue lights, as well as the orange and red lights, which are the colors that photosynthetic pigments absorb the most energy. As you can see, very little aerobic bacteria grew around the green lights, because this is the color that chlorophylls A and B reflect. And this last image is just another absorption spectrum with better detail. Take a second to analyze the absorption of different colors of, wave, uh, of light by the chlorophylls A, B, and carotenoids. This concludes the first podcast on photosynthesis. Two more are to, are to follow.